we'll just go back and forth. We'll start on this side. We have uh, uh, Gina and Mila and to ask our first question on the panel. My question to the panel regards uh, rights to the film's work upon graduating from each of your programs. Any work that they created during the time of the work number three upon graduation, do they retain the rights to that work? Does the university retain the rights? And also, what about any work that they do outside of any class requirements, but during the time that they're still a student, do they retain the rights to that work? outside of the university, outside of the program, but still during the time of their students, or does the university continue right? I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. Okay. Uh, we, the USC owns the rights to the student's film because we belong to the union. We have to. Um, if the student enters a competition, we surrender the rights to the student. Uh, it's, it's more to protect the student, in our view, and to belong to the union, we have to do that. Um, but before we did this, and this was years and years and years ago, um, students would would take their film out and be taken advantage of. People would try to buy their film from them, steal the idea, and there was no protection. As long as we own the rights to it, we can help protect the student. Once they graduate, we surrender the rights. Um, we work with them to make sure that they're being represented right, even if all not. In terms of Anything they shoot on their own, that's theirs. And we have no right to that. So they're not using SEGA actors, so it doesn't affect them. That doesn't matter. And any other universities want to address Our students own all of their films at any given time. So it works. So anything they do is completely owned by the students. We just um, ask, you know, at certain times to, to showcase them or to put them online and to promote the school. But um, I've just been speaking to one of our faculty who's also training on this in the last uh, week or so, so this is a kind of time with COVID. Um, we have a, a, a library of, of films that we can't uh, exploit because we, in the past we had to uh, face this issue. Um, I had initially been interested in what's called a, a mutually exclusive uh, arrangement with the students where each the, the student and, and the department would both uh, equally own the copyright to the, to the film and could exploit, exploit it without um, any kind of uh, requirement to contact or get permission from the other. But I've been led, I've been in, in, informed and now believe that it would be better for us to have a, a, a limited license. So in fact, we can um, take the film and put it into the festivals as they come up or uh, put it into DVDs uh, or other opportunities to promote the department uh, for the student and not have to keep going back to the student. And then the student will have the ability to uh, use their uh, film for their own purposes without contacting us. So it'll be a nice, much more clean situation. Uh, but let me underline, so it's, so it's bright and clear, we don't want to be the sole owner of any student's work, whether it's a script or uh, a television show, or a film. What we'd just like to be able to do is to uh, take advantage of it so that we can promote that student and uh, promote our department uh, long after that student has left the department and maybe it's difficult to get back in touch with. Okay. If I may add just the sure, sure. second part to that question. Because we're trying to develop in the university setting a well-rounded filmmaker or whatever they end up becoming, you know, on graduation. Is part of the university program for each of our schools also teaching them the business aspect of when they get out as to how to protect themselves and their work? Are there courses or is it part of each course that they're learning also the business aspect of this you know, entertainment industry? Anyone like to drink the Our program includes a course that gives them direction in terms of what they can take on or um, when they need to seek additional like, counsel or assistance. Um, we want them to be successful, so we need them to be great artists and then you know, to have something terrible or unfortunate to fall upon them. So we do assist them in that process. We, we definitely do. It's, it's one, it's in every course, but there's also specific courses about the business of the business. Um, you know, anytime you have to pull from a city, and the students do this, they work with our, our 
production facilities office. They have to learn all of that. There's a production book that goes along with it. There's a budget that goes along with it. Uh, so they're doing full up productions just like you would once they get out. So it's all part of the learning experience, yes. Yeah, the model is the, pro is, is the professional um, production. So whatever you would think you have to do in a professional production, you're asking them students to do. So we have a, a, a production management class that takes them through all of the uh, union uh, contracts and, and uh, work rules, uh, takes them through all the other kinds of contracts with distributors. Uh, we try to prepare them for, with an experience in the classroom that replicates what would happen on the outside if they were independent producer. Uh, so I think uh, <laughs> we, we do the same thing. I mean, that's that's our job in, at the university is to educate the students so when they do graduate, they're fully able to be able to do that. Um, and yeah, I mean, they're pretty much doing their production, you know, like if they, you know, on their own. Um, so they have to get insurance and they have to, um, you know, make sure they're following within the union guidelines and, you know, all that stuff. So I think they definitely, through what they're learning in class and the experience they have, um, you know, they're fully capable to be able to know what they're getting themselves into once they graduate. Let's go over here. We have uh, Austin, are you, or Chance, are you asking a question? Or maybe over here. Uh, I actually have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I was wondering what your guidelines were for your films for the classes. I know we have some guidelines here um, as to what we can have in our films. Yeah, we have content guidelines because we're in high school in terms of the things that they can have in the movies. Because we showed them to, um, to you know, your families and this is an to everybody. So are there any restrictions? Uh, we don't blow things up. Um, you know, and we're in practice the safe filming. Uh, Sorry, I'll keep it. Yeah, it's, no, it's, it's, it's pretty open. Whatever you make, you make. Uh, you know, within decency. And again, we're a union school, so we have to follow the rules. You can't be a kid. You have a kid on set. You have to have a nurse. But, you know, it's, it's a real production. So, I mean, if you want to have a sex scene, you can have a sex scene. If that's what you're asking. <laughs> 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 we're, not, we're not x rated, though. Okay. Okay, so I guess there are some extreme limitations. But yeah, because you're an adult, you get to do what you'd like to do as an adult. That sounds bad, but as, a, as an adult, it makes films, as opposed to um, a junior, uh, high school student or a minor, where the situation here is a bit different. You should, you should be guided to by the marketplace. Okay, I hate to say that, but uh, let's bring up the marketplace. I mean, if you look at the films that are in distribution over the last uh, 20 years, how many of them are X? Let's not even be there, then. just de minimis. How many of them are R's? Very, very few. So if you want to produce something that nobody sees, that can't be used to promote your career, yeah, you can do that. I don't think that's the best use of your time or even more our resources. But you, yeah, I'm not going to stop you from doing it. OK, another question over here.
I'm curious because you can minor in film class and take, uh, or not a regular class, but a class outside of film. Um, how does that affect your, your expertise in the subject, or how does that, 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 um, that degree affect, um, <coughs> I guess, your, the rest of your career? So getting a minor, what are you, what are you not learning as opposed to getting a major in film? Yeah. Or how does that affect you? Can we address that? I guess, when would a minor, how would you steer somebody toward a minor in film as opposed to a major in film or cinematic arts or television? So you all will be great at a number of different things. Maybe it's how making and maybe it's I am mechanics. No. So if you have another interest that you feel you want to pursue in terms of your career, go pursue it. But that doesn't mean you have to leave film behind. You can still have a minor in film. And maybe you know down the road you'll go back. Who knows? Your career will probably take you on a number of, of different terms. So that's when a minor could be advantageous. Additionally, all of our programs are competitive. So if you're not admitted and you still want to study film, we encourage you to do that. Um, in terms of the program differences at UCLA, our minor is not, um, it doesn't have a concentration or an emphasis. It's a general film minor. So you need to satisfy courses within different categories. A lot of students who want to take a minor just want to make movies. Well, that's great, and you can just make movies, but it's not going to satisfy your minor requirements. So that's something that a student should consider if they are looking into taking a minor. Um, but they have a very specific area that they want to study. Um, even in our bachelor's program, we train you to be a well-rounded filmmaker. You will learn how to do everything from editing to, you know, being a cinematographer, directing, everything that you need to know, and then your senior year you focus on your concentration. So you're not even going to spend more than a year on the thing that you may be most passionate about, but we want you to go out into the world and be well-rounded. We also want you to be employable. And with the economy being as it is, you may be a great screenwriter, but maybe it takes you a couple of years to get that screenplay purchased, bought, whatever. So in the meantime, you're also an exceptional editor where well, you can do editing in the meantime. So those are kind of some of the differences, I think, between the minor and the major in, the, in terms of curriculum. Um, also, the number of classes is, is much smaller. The time it takes to complete a minor is much shorter. So those are, those are sort of the big differences. OK, anybody else want to talk about minors? I just want to make a sure. second point, which is that um, we are now in the process of, uh, of uh, eliminating or uh, phasing out uh, double majors, you should know that. Uh, and this is because of the uh, pressures placed on the university uh, by the budget situation in the state of California. It's, uh, it's the case that the university wants to uh, maximize uh, each student's access to university resources and that becomes more problematic when uh, large numbers of students are, are, are it's a word, double dipping with a double major. Uh, so double majors are being uh, phased out in our system. But uh, having said that, uh, I'll just echo what we said about minors. Okay. Let's um, stop it. We can, we can have those that are already standing, um, that are in line our Q&A to the rest of your questions. Um, we also do have some refreshments afterward. Anybody is interested in this game, let's take a for those. Um, our next question, let's have a chance to get a question. Go ahead. Um, this is for general to the panel. What, an aspect of the application for the more personal parts about the, the application, how exactly would there be a specific format to that, or is there, is it an essay, is it a narrative, is there any specific way you need to write that? Which component of the personal ceiling, or? Yes. Um, yeah, for, for us, it fits from your point of view. You might be the first person, but right, the third person, or however you want to write it.
next question right here. Okay, I have a couple. Um, one is, when you're, how easy or how realistic is it to transfer into, and I know you have the two-year program, four-year program, to transfer into the film department. Is that where you need to start or you discover that you, know, you, you do have the strength in film, can you realistically transfer in or do you have a minor for USC and Chapman um, in film? Um, so we have a minor, just to address that first, in film studies, um, and then we have a minor in television, broadcast journalism, public relations, and advertising. So we don't actually have any sort of production-based minor in film. Um, so I mean, with the television, you're going to get some, but um, just to preface that, um, as far as transferring into our program, um, if you're already at Chapman, um, if you're trying to transfer into our film production program, it's going to be very difficult. Um, we highly encourage all of our incoming freshmen to, and it, it's hard to do, but if you think that that's where you want to go is directing or cinematography or editing, you need to apply as a freshman. Because um, we take a very, very small number of inter-university transfers just because it's such an impactful program for us. Our other majors is not quite as bad, so there is a little bit more flexibility. Um, but you do need to have, you know, a strong GPA at Chapman, and you need to see a couple components, and you still have to fill out the entire application you would if you're a freshman. Um, so I mean, it, it, it kind of depends. Um, and then if you're within Dodge College already, um, you have a little bit of an advantage of changing your major. Um, but film production is still definitely going to be a little bit more difficult, um, just because we have so many students, and we want to make sure we accommodate for the students that we have. In um, transferring is tough into production in particular because it varies from year to year. Um, the way our students move through the sequence, um, the only way to open up spots is if students don't move forward. And it's usually because they have to pass the foreign language requirements, so they can't move forward. So that opens up spaces. This year we have four, four students that we were transferring. Last year we had more than 20. So it varies from year to year. What I'd recommend is if you're going to transfer, you transfer into we call it critical studies, cinematic studies. Um, the programs almost run parallel, and I actually prefer the critical studies program because it's more flexible. It allows the student to take still production classes, but other classes within the program more freely. It also allows them a double major. It's, it's an easier program to double major. So we have people like Ryan Singer, who did Spider-Man, who was a critical studies <coughs> major, and still went into film. So we have a lot of alumni that come out of the critical studies program. And we also have a lot of people that come out of the Critical Studies program and end up doing other things. They go into education and whatnot. Uh, a lot of them go into uh, executive positions in studios. So it's a little bit more well-rounded, um, but we also have more spaces in the in fall and spring for transfers and studies. And then how many years will it actually take to graduate from each of your programs? Four. State institution, any citizen in California can take a class. And these people were deferring graduation because they just were so in love with production, they just wanted to keep taking production classes. Well, I'm happy to say that's no longer the case. Um, we have pretty strict guidelines now across the, the university, um, and we're happy about participating in those strict guidelines. You will uh, be monitored as to your credits, and we will help you get out two years. There are more, uh, a year ago, uh, I think six what we call super seniors. These are not seniors with some um, you know, uh, enhanced powers, <laughs> but seniors who were uh, over the uh, graduation credit level that's needed to, to graduate. Instead of needing 120 credits, they had 134, 144, 150 units. Those people are being identified, they are being limited, in the number of in the kinds of courses they can take to, be, to those courses they need to graduate, and they're being um, escorted to the process post haste. So uh, I would say two years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Only two years. <laughs> yeah, we're four, um, but we have had students that have graduated in three to three and a half as well. 
Jackson. Uh, you guys might have um, answered this already when you were talking about the newfound importance in documentary filmmaking, but I was curious to know if your programs offer a uh, specific course on uh, documentary production or if that is a different program. Our, half of our production is commercial, half is independent. Faculty is split just about down the middle. Uh, we have faculty who all they do is independent, they want to get rewards for that. Um, so there's, we offer both. Um, by independent, I'm not sure, we talked earlier, are you talking real TV independent or are you talking real? Um, just like, uh, it sounded like most of your courses were focused around a, a fictional narrative as far as the majors go. Um, I read this and just did. So I was wondering if there was a specific uh, direction to go in um, documentary as a you know a film it perspective or a TV. I, I think it's up to the student in our school. I don't think you guys are probably say the same thing. If they want to, I want to speak for you, but if they want to go doc. They they go doc. We have a documentary concentration. Yeah, so in our uh, television major, which is kind of weird. Um, we have a big international emphasis too, so a lot of our doc students um, travel during the summertime or our winter session. So they go to Africa, they go to Asia, and then they do a three, kind of three week um, intensive where they're out filming their documentary and then come back and edit it. So it's a great opportunity for our students to be able to have an international experience as well. In fact, one of our alumni students here that's a chat, Jonathan Formica, um, just told me about his experience that he had going to Africa and he made a documentary, which he's going to be premiering um, at their school in December. So yeah, they were supposed to go to Ghana, but uh, then they had the bombings. Um, so they literally called every NGO in Africa and found a small one in Tanzania that let them come in and film them for two weeks. So I'm interested to see it because it was kind of a last minute thing. So. Great. Okay, question over here. Hi. Okay. So, um, I was curious about the internships your schools offer within the industry. <laughs> we don't have yeah, internships. Yeah, I don't keep statistics on this, but I'm told I run the largest uh, media internship program in the public state, public school in the state of California. We have, I have right now. Uh, over 30 students who are in different aspects of the industry. Um, the next semester I'll have another 30. In the summer I'll have uh, probably 20. So we run a lot of students um, going through our internship program. And they're in television, they're in public relations, they're in uh, motion pictures. Um, the variety of jobs is just um, reflects the industry. Um, so we have a very vibrant and very uh, exciting internship program. If you want to know more about it, I'd be happy to, to share the specifics. But that'll go beyond what you should talk about. And do any of the other um, schools have an internship placement program or a way that you kind of connect yeah. students with um, getting their kind of equipment work? Yeah. I mean, yeah, probably all do, you know, to one center or another. another. But I, I need to set some realistic expectations here. I don't think any school finds you an internship. You, you are an active participant in finding that. What we do is we can connect you, and I'll talk just from my point of view. We'll connect you, uh, and studios and independent folks do come to us and looking for summer interns or spring interns, whatever. Um, and we have a job board, just like everybody does on the internet and, and whatnot, they're all vetted. Um, but it's up to you to get it. A lot of freshmen come in and the first thing they say to them is, if you think that we're going to find you a job, you're wrong. We don't find you a job. We don't find you an internship. We provide you with the opportunities. We have five, six, seven speakers come in on campus each week. It's your job to get there and network. Um, you know, we have pitch opportunities where you get to pitch to actual professionals. It's your job to get there. It's your job to go with the network. So we'll provide you everything, but it's up to you. So if anybody sitting here thinks you're going to go to USC and we're going to find you a job, we don't do that. Uh, and it's, it's always an eye opener to some of our freshmen and their parents especially. It's like, oh man, what? And you're not going to hit them and get them a job? Um, so we'll help you. But, yeah, it's, and, and per 
personally, I don't know a single student that doesn't have an internship. So. The internship is actually a course at UCLA um, paired with uh, an hour lecture where we're bringing up speakers, um, students keep a journal, they get to talk to each other about their experiences, and it's a requirement of the students who are getting the degree. Yeah, our students, um, we, you know, we can get credit for it. Um, so what a lot of, you know, since we're in Orange County, what a lot of our students will do um, is only take three classes, and then their fourth class is their internship. Um, so it allows them to drive up to LA, you know, for two or three days a week and be able to complete an internship uh, up there. Um, and then that's, you know, nice because you're getting credit for it as well. Um, and most of our students will have multiple. Um, I know I personally had three before I graduated, and you'll find that pretty common, is that you'll have two or three because that's more connections and more experience that you have. Um, so it's definitely something, but you know, like what USC was mentioning, um, it's definitely not a placement program. We have a career development center um, that you can talk to, and they'll look at your resume, and they'll help you with your interview, and they'll give you all the skills necessary, um, but you, you definitely need to take the initiative um, and network. And, pull out your business cards and, you know, shake their hand and kind of do your, do your thing too, so. So our, our course for seniors next semester in history prep will kind of go over a little bit of that, give you a little taste of the fact that you really are, you know, when you get out there, you really are kind of selling yourself um, and what you have to offer to um, prospective employers and, and it really is incumbent upon you, um, unlike some other uh, kinds of areas of discipline to actually go out there and, and the hustle worked, and then once you get that going, you make the connections and you'll be able to get references and, and find work that way. It's just kind of the way it is as a, as a filmmaker. Um, Adriana, a question. Um, yeah, my question is more for UCLA. Um, can you name minor in your film department as a freshman? You have to take three courses in order to apply. There is an application process actually to be a minor, um, and so it would be very difficult until probably the spring quarter. Um, to have taken those three classes, but it's not impossible. Great. And Greg? I actually have a similar question directed primarily towards USC, just looking at the majors. Um, if I'm looking at two different majors in different departments, is there any disadvantage to applying to two different departments? No, we, we actually have a lot of students too. It's, it's your first pick, second pick. What do you so, on your application, there'll be first choice and second choice. And you put it both down, and you have to still submit the supplemental to both departments. Uh, it's, there's no advantage or disadvantage. I, I think somebody wrote it up earlier. Always put down second choice. Mm -hmm. Always. If you leave it blank, and the production team doesn't like you, but you, know, you show animation skills, animation will look at you. If not, you'll lose that. Uh, you may still be admitted to the university, and that's, that's important for you all to know. You can apply to USC and to the, to the Cinematic Arts School and not get into the Cinematic Arts program and still be admitted to USC. And if that's the case, then you immediately try to transfer into curriculum studies. So you're in the school, and that happens. I mean, we transfer students in right away. So uh, if you don't get into Cinematic Arts, it doesn't necessarily mean you don't get into USC. You can still take film classes, you can still transfer into curriculum studies. Can I give you back off of that as well? UCLA is similar, so there are students who get into UCLA, don't get into the film program, they apply as a UCLA student or a petitioner, as we call them, in the spring, and are sometimes admitted. Um, one thing that's really important to note if you do decide to apply as a transfer student, you cannot list film as your second um, elective major. We will not consider your application. Yeah, we're, I guess, just to note that way with film production as well. If that's, that needs to be your first choice, if it's listed as a second, um, we won't look at it. Um, but if anything else is listed <laughs> as a second choice and film production's your first, like I mentioned before, we definitely highly look at that. And, and since we read all the applications, we you know, try to see if there's another way to accommodate the student. What do you think of? Uh, music industry. I'm sorry? Music industry. Music industry? Uh, yeah, there's a... So you're talking about double major in two different schools? Well, I mean, just choosing one, going into freshman year, is there any disadvantage to applying to both? I think yeah, two, two times a year. <laughs> okay, great. Um, thank you so much for coming. We'd like to get a round of applause. Yeah.